Hi students, welcome to the Baiju Sindhu News Analysis for 1st of August 2018. So let's get started. So let's look into the first article. So the first article says the case for increasing the retirement age of the judges. So this article is picked up from yesterday's newspaper that is 31st of July and what we will be discussing in detail is whether the age of the judges have to be increased with respect to the retirement age. So why exactly is this being done? Because of the pendency of the cases that has been increasing with time so what we will also have to do is we will have to increase the retirement age of the judges the prime reason is with time the judges would have got the expertise as to how a particular case has to be resolved and these judges expertise is required so what we would be discussing in detail is what are the advantages of increasing the retirement age of the judges in detail so let's try and understand everything with respect to this article so first thing that we need to understand is with respect to the background. So when you look into the background, the background with respect to the Venkatachalaya report, that is report of the National Commission to review of the working of the constitution way back in the 2002 had recommended increasing the age of the retirement for the judges. And at the same time, there have been number of half-hearted attempts in the past. That is, there was one of the constitutional amendment bill, that is the 114th amendment bill, which also wanted to raise the retirement age of high court judges to 65 from the current 62 years and all this has been a futile exercise the simply reason is the legislative and the executive was not ready to push this particular bill into an act and that is why we are still not able to resolve this particular query so first thing that we need to understand is what exactly is the issue area why exactly do we have to increase the age of the judges one of the prime reasons as to why we will have to increase the age of the judges is with respect to the judge population ratio. So what exactly it says? It says that the judge population ratio in India is among the lowest in the world at 19.66 judges per million as of today. And at the same time when you consider in other countries, let's say for example, UK had about 51 judges per million people in 2016 and at the same time the United States had 107 per million and Australia had 44 and Canada had 75. So all all these countries have way beyond us and India is comparatively at a very lower judges per million. So in order to make sure that we actually compensate the number of cases that have been piling up in the court layers, that is why we will have to come up and bring about a change in this particular motion. So what one of the prime important reason is the judge population ratio. So kindly remember this particular statistic. And next thing that we will have to understand is in terms of the national judicial grid data. So what it says is that there are almost 2.84 cases that are pending in the subordinate courts, 43 lakh cases are pending before the high courts and 57,987 cases are pending before. One of the statistics it clearly says right, there is humongous and loads and loads of cases that are bundled up in Supreme Court, the high court, the sub subordinate courts in all courts that are there in India. So what this we will have to ideally identify is in case it is more time that is consumed for a particular case and for its disposal it means its denial of justice so what it clearly says is that the rule of law actually becomes a distant dream so more the time I take for a disposal of a particular case the more I am actually making that person not get justice so justice delayed is justice denied so all that this proves is that pendency of cases is indirectly going ahead with delaying of justice and at the same time what we will also have to do is in case we are enabling this whole process of increasing the age of the judges what we will be enabling the judiciary is to deal with enormous number of cases that are already piling up another important point we will have to consider is that with time so it takes a lot of time for a particular judge to understand how exactly the law works with time he would have understood a number of things which the knowledge would not teach it's the experience that works out so he would have seen a number of situations he would have seen a number of cases a number of ways of arguing a particular case so all this experience he would have gauged with time and this experience will help him in delivery of the cases so what we are doing is currently the retirement age is about 6 to 60 
62 to 65 so what this do is when he is at the prime time of experience he is being retired so is this the right way this is not the right one is another proportion or another issue area and what we also need to consider in this particular case is that these are the judges who are also after retirement heading towards the tribunals so while they are already heading the tribunals up to the age of 70 why can't they do the same thing in the supreme court or the high court when you have the provision that these judges can be employed in tribunals while they can work in other let's say for example the commissions are like the human rights commission and so on when you're making use of the expertise in tribunals and commissions why not make use of all these people who have vast amount of knowledge and experience in terms of judiciary in the same judiciary that they have been working with so all these things have to be thought about one is with respect to the judge population ratio another is with respect to the pendency of the cases next is with respect to the experience and finally something to do with the tribunals so so all these are the issue areas so how what exactly CGI Mishra says with respect to pendencies so we have seen that pendency is one of the major deadlocks in the Supreme Court as well as the High Court so in order to resolve this whole problem what CGI Mishra says is that there are certain courts in India let's say there are certain high courts and number of subordinate courts and specific high courts and subordinate courts are able to perform much efficiently than other high courts are subordinate courts so what we need to understand is these high courts and subordinate courts will have a certain model and because they have a certain model that is why they have worked in a very efficient way and because they have an efficient mechanism because they have a clear-cut structure as to how they are working effectively what other high courts or the subordinate courts should do is they should take this similar model which has worked out and apply it with regional understanding so this is the first point that CGI Mishra says in order to resolve the pending of the cases and at the same time he says that there has been modernization that has been already conducted a modernization or computerization technology and court automation system e-courts and digitization of the technology so all this has been conducted but this should be taken off in a much abrupt way and this is already done but what is happening is this is not in an abrupt way we are moving at a very slow pace and this has to go at a faster pace on the first point he says that we'll have to take up a model that has been there in one other court and we will have to apply the same model if it is worked efficiently for them and the second point it says that the technology upgradation that is happening is currently so and this has to go on in an abrupt way and at the same time what also needs to be understood is there are certain alternative methods dis dispute resolution let's say for example we have the arbitration or mediation or the pre litigation or negotiation and you have the number of setups of low kadalach so when you have a number of alternate dispute resolution why not make use of it make sure that whenever there is a particular case make sure that these clients are who are coming up to you they're going through this particular gate rather than coming up to the coach make use of all these domains of dispute resolution the alternate dispute resolutions that we have once it comes up to a court it gets clocked up so instead of doing all this push in the thoughts and give them that awareness that there is an alternative dispute resolution first go through that alternative dispute resolution so that it can be bilaterally arranged and this can be worked about and at the same time we already have certain fast track codes so all these fast track codes that are currently there are working properly and efficiently because there is fast disposal of the cases but one of the lacuna areas is we are not fixing the time limit for all these fast track coach what can also be done is with the establishment of the fast track coach what can also be done is we will have to fix a particular time or a deadline in case there is a time limit or a deadline then there can be much faster approach of disposal of the cases in the fast track court this is what CGI Mishra speaks about the pendency of the cases so what exactly are the examples from other countries in terms of the retirement ages so when we consider another important factor how the world actually sees with respect to retirement age in the Supreme Court of the United States and in the constitutional in Austria Greece judges are appointed for life so as long as they want to serve the judiciary and they are have that mental capacity and the stability to serve the judiciary they would be able to take on the cases that is with respect to the United States and in Belgium Denmark Ireland the Netherlands Norway and Australia the retirement age of judges is about 70 years and judges in Canada and and Germany retire at the age of 75 and 68 so all these examples make sure that increasing in the 
age of the judges is the right way to go about because there are these examples that have been said and judiciary has taken importance of all their experience in other countries so can we take a leaf from these countries is another point that we need to consider at the same time the next point that we need to understand is what would be the merits so when we look into what are the merits in case of increasing the age of all these people one of the first things that we need to understand is we will have a strong pool of experience judges so the first point that we need to understand is the experience behind them so all the experience that they have will be able to deliver in the form of judges and that is why we need to retain these judges and we need to increase their age at till up to 70 years and second point it goes on to say is new judges can be appointed without displacing the existing judges why the simple reason is we already checked the judge population ratio it is very low in India at almost 19.66 judges per million so there are new judges who are appointed at the same time the existing one has to be there because we have almost pendency of cases and also the judge population ratio is comparatively less that is why we need to make sure that with appointment of new judges there also needs to be these people who are retained at the same time it says that there are mounting problem of arrears that is pending of cases and then there is impending litigation explosion and what it will also render is post retirement assignments unattractive and as a consequence strengthen the rule of law and independence of the judiciary so what exactly could be the conclusion bit so when we look into the conclusion bit what we need to understand is the legislature and the executive need to make a strong resolve and have to make sure that they are increasing the retirement age of the judges they need to get serious and they'll have to consider this particular proposal immediately and move beyond all this partisan politics that they are currently undergoing and make sure that the pendency of cases that are currently there has to be resolved so that all the cases and the litigants that are facing problem are actually up in peace because justice delayed is justice denied we will have to make sure that all these judges work intact and at the same time the pendency of the cases that are there in the court are also resolved this is all we will have to know from this article so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article says center for removal of nota from Rajya Sabha poll so what exactly is it when you look into the context there is one of the PILs that is actually filed in the Supreme Court to actually scrap the nota option that is there in the Rajya Sabha. So let's get back to background. So what exactly is the background? We all know that in the election commission had released one of the notifications way back in the 2014 that there would be nota in the Rajya Sabha elections. Why was that realized? Because there was another judgment in the Supreme Court way back in the 2013 that it wanted all the open direct elections that are happening to have this proposal of nota button in the elections. And because the judgment in 2013 said that nota has to be given in direct elections, that is why the election commission had issued another circular in 2014 that there would be certain provisions of nota that would be included in the Rajya Sabha elections and this happened way back in 2014. So how exactly does this whole Rajya Sabha uh, nota option work? And usually how exactly it happens is they have the ballot paper. They usually have to show this ballot paper to the agents of their party. So you have the party agent who is currently looking into what exactly is doing. We have the open ballot in Rajya Sabha, right? So in case I am the MLA, what I would do is I will have to show what exactly as my priorities, what exactly is the voting pattern that I am doing I'll have to show to the party delegate and then I'll have to vote it so let's say I am again a MLA and I'm not voting according to the party's order or say for example according to the party's rules in that case only my four vote that I am putting to that particular candidate will become ineffective if I have chosen nota but I will not be disqualified why let me get back to one of the important arguments the Supreme Court had said in Kuldeep Nair case so what did Kuldeep Nair case said so it, this was way back in the year 2006 where Supreme Court has clearly said that an every elector that who was voting in the Rajya Sabha or in the presidential elections his penal provisions will not be enforced of him on the 10th schedule that is 
in case he is voting against the party whip to another candidate then it means that all the laws that have been laid in the 10th schedule that is the penal actions that have been laid in the 10th schedule for having voted against the party rules will not be enforced and he will not be disqualified so in the Kuldeep Nair case in, in 2006 the Supreme Court clearly said that all these laws that have been enforced in the anti-defection law that is coming under 10th schedule that in case a person votes against the party norms then he will not disqualify this particular person and at the same time immediately after this particular judgment was done what election commission has repeatedly said is that MPs and MLAs have the freedom not to exercise this particular franchise so what do we mean by it let's say for example you I any person who is actually voting in direct elections we have the right to vote at the same time we don't we also have the right not to vote likewise what the election commission clearly says is let's say for example it is the election of the president or the vice president or for example Rajya Sabha all these elections the party people that is the MLAs or the MPs who are actually voting in they do not are entitled to vote to that particular party sweep the simple reason is just like how I have the permission to actually vote and not to vote same wise the electors the electors here are the MLAs and the MPs who are voting in presidential as well as Rajya Sabha elections have the right that is they can either vote or they are not voting and the simple reason is that these are the constitutional principles that are already given and the Supreme Court has also said in the Kuldeep Nair versus Union of India case in 2016 that I will not be disqualified so I can vote for a particular party or I may not vote for it I may vote for the cross party as well but I will not be disqualified why the Supreme Supreme Court has already laid this establishment at the same time what I also need to consider is but the party may take some disciplinary actions against them I may go against the party's rules I may actually abstain myself from voting but at the same time they will not be disqualified as an MLA but at the same time the party would be able to take disciplinary action against me legally speaking I may not be disqualified as an MLA but in case the party feels that I have gone against its whip then it means that the party can take certain disciplinary actions so any defiant voter can continue to be an MLA and his vote can also not be invalidated for defying the party directions is what this argument all about so what exactly is the issue area right now so why do we have to retain this whole idea of concept of nota so the Supreme Court judgment when it came in 2013 right it was very ambiguous it is not clearly mentioned when it is for direct elections or indirect elections or is it only applicable for people voting and not for legislators who are voting indirectly to the people in Rajya Sabha or in the presidential elections so the 2013 elections was kind of ambiguous that is why this election PIL has been filed another important reason is there has been selective usage of nota in a few states let's say for example it was used in Gujarat but there was not used in other state Rajya Sabha elections so why is this particular idea that is going on one side you are using it in one state and the other side you are not using it another state why exactly is this happening when you are doing it for one state it has to be uniformly followed in every other state so why is this bias is another question and at the same time what needs to be understood is in case you are incorporating the same in the Rajya Sabha elections use it also in the presidential elections why are you not using it in the presidential elections is another question another important most important questions that we will have to understand is electors in the Rajya Sabha already have the option of abstaining as I've already explained in the Kuldeep Nair case I as an MLA or an MP I would be able to vote for a particular person or I can abstain myself from voting when we already have the option of abstaining myself from voting why is this nota option currently there why is this nota option required while I can already abstain myself where my vote is already invalidated while it is not being ineffective what is the whole use of this nota coming into picture it's of no use so why have it as a whole is what this article all about so now this PIL has actually been filed in the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court has actually said that Mishra orally observed that nota is meant only for the universal adult suffrage and direct elections and not polls held by the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote as done in Rajya Sabha. Now it is clearly mentioned but the 2013 and was not clearly mentioned but now the Supreme Court has clearly said that in case it is the indirect elections or it is happening by the proportional representation 
representation which is by a single transferable vote as it is done in Rajya Sabha then it will not be applicable and it has also said whether to vote or not to vote falls under that particular person's idea that is of the member of the house why are you the election commission not involving in this particular idea whether I will have to vote or not to vote of an MP's power or an MLA's idea is himself that is he has to decide whether he has to vote or not why are you fiddling with this exercise why are you the election commission making it more complicated is what the supreme court has said what exactly is the whole idea should nota be there or should it not be there so some of the arguments as to why it should not be there is that it would actually lead to horse trading corruption and using of extra constitutional message to defeat a particular candidate there would be certain people who defect from one party to another so what is the whole idea is that there is horse trading that is happening there is corruption so when we are paying money to that MLA who is actually defecting from one party to another it means that there is money transfer that is happening and when there is money transfer it is leading to corruption so this is the first point that we need to understand so in order to prevent horse trading corruption and also extra constitution threats to actually defeat that particular party member what is being done is that nota has to be removed so in case there is nota what would happen is there would be few people who would take money from an opposite party and they'll make their selves that is the vote ineffective because they are sure that they cannot be disqualified because Kuldeep Nair case already says that they'll not be disqualified and at the same time this whole idea of nota that is there currently with the proportional representation while we already have all this this idea of single transferable vote is to make it easy for the person to get elected but what this nota actually does is this makes the whole idea of this particular exercising of vote futile and has no practical purpose so nota has to be removed in order to avoid the corrupt practices and the other idea that we also need to understand is nota should be there I mean we did realize now nota should not be there but why exactly should nota be there is another point that we will have to consider let's say for example there are there is only one party whip and there is the party organizer the higher level leaders who actually decide that this is the person who should be elected the majority of the legislators who are also selected but these legislators are not happy with that particular person being given the ticket but it is only the few who are actually happy with that particular person but the majority of these people are not happy so what this basically does is these people the majority of the legislators can actually have a possibility of protest against the minority leadership so what they are clearly saying is that you the high command have already chosen a particular candidate whom I am not agreeing with so all these majority people are not ready to agree with this person who is actually been selected by the high command so this is one of the way to tell that we are abstaining ourselves or we are voting for nota simple reason is we are not happy with this particular candidate and because we are not happy with this particular candidate how do I show it to my high command by not voting and that is why this this has to be retained is what the nota argument is so on a conclusion bit what is that we will have to understand on a conclusion bit the idea of democratization that is of this indirect elections that is currently taking place through the reforms of nota and so on has to be done but at the same time what needs to be done is there needs to be an addressing of all the issues of the other legislators that is we need to relearn the art of floor management how to make sure that people actually vote for their party members rather than other party by actually making it an inclusive process without making it an inclusive process when you have a straightforward unilateral and a straightforward approach this will not work but instead what we need to have is a floor management instead of working on the floor management if you are working about the in democratization of the nota this will not serve purpose is the argument that we will have to understand so moving on let's look into the awareness we do not have much of articles with respect to the Hindu today for discussion that is why we have picked up articles from yesterday and one of the things is with respect to NRC it will be covered in detail we are just waiting for the clear cut guidelines as to what exactly the central government and Assam government is doing once we have the clear idea then we will surely discuss in detail about the NRC but with respect to awareness kindly go through these articles that are there in today's articles one is Rajasthan first state to implement biofuel policy the public private 
gap in healthcare this has already been discussed and another important article the center imposes 25 percent safeguard duty on import of cell solar cells this has already been discussed again we have discussed this article with respect to the boon and the bane of this particular idea so there are certain students who would be us as to you're not covering certain issues yes the simple reason is all issues will be covered but not all articles will be covered let me give you a simple example so there are certain bills or certain acts which will have repetition of articles every single day in the newspaper such things will be avoided all new articles or in case any new update has been made all these articles will be discussed but in case it is a bill or say for example an existing issue then such things will not be discussed say for example in today's Hindu editorial one of the things was with respect to the India and South Korea relations while India and South Korea relations have already been dealt with and let's say another important article Sri Krishna committee report Sri Krishna committee has already been dealt with and there are certain important articles international and that is to do with Imran Khan winning the elections so all these articles are already explained in such a case we would not do a repetition of articles why the simple reason is it would waste your time you would be listening to all these things while you have already listened to all these things there would be certain minute changes that would be there in the articles and that is why you put it on the awareness article so that you don't have to waste your time and your precious time in listening to all the things that has already been repeated that's the only reason as to why we avoid repetition of articles so articles will be avoided but all issues that is important from the exams perspective will be covered and we promised you that every issue that is important from the UPSC's perspective will be covered on the Hindu analysis okay so this is it for today so please visit the Baiju CNA look into the practice questions both prelims as well as mains write all your answers on the comment section so that we can evaluate and give you the relevant feedback for the same thank you so much all the best